Many people buy Mercedes-Benz for a few key reasons. Beautifully styled wheels, calipers, and performance with twin-turbo V8 engines. And technology and innovation that exceeds most other brands. Reliability and cost of service and maintenance is ultimately what matters to a lot of customers. I'm gonna share a list of five of the most reliable Mercedes-Benz that people can get their hands on. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. One of the most reliable Mercedes you can actually buy in modern day history is this little unit. Now obviously this shares a platform with a couple of other models and we'll get to that. Obviously you do have the Mercedes touches, you have the beautiful rims and you do get the beautiful LED headlights and of course Mercedes Benz and the three pointed star, it's all the same. A very tidy and modern day Mercedes interior. You do have a lot of glass to allow illumination in there for all the happy customers and you likely won't be in the service shop every single week with this vehicle because this is the GLA 250 and the GLA models with the format it gives you the all-wheel drive capability and assurance in rough roads and poor driving conditions you can also get a hot rod version like that the AMG like this what has all the extra badging extra turbo performance you do have the great wing over the top and the back they do give you extra detailing and this is a GLA 45 by AMG these little SUVs are proving to be very reliable there's a few little nickel and dime things to note battery draw is one thing there's been a few comments of the odd oil leak starter troubles sunroof I've heard of the odd problem with it coming slightly dislodged from the top for the most part those are relatively rare issues the beauty is this is a double clutch transmission so it actually does drive more spirited I would also add that last time I drove this I also realized that the driving experience and dynamics doesn't feel like an s-class or an e-class it does have a little harsher ride it doesn't feel quite as isolated from the elements but again you're driving that three-pointed star but you gain reliability on it and fuel economy because you get the turbocharged four cylinder engine in this vehicle and it actually shares the same platform as the A-Class and the CLA. So the CLA and the GLA are essentially the same vehicle. So the CLA also takes advantage of the opportunities with the relatively high levels of reliability, low levels of failure and the technicalities and what all the tech that you're finding here are shared with the CLA, but that is actually a sedan. Whereas what we have here is a small SUV. So great reliability back behind this slightly simpler design less technical equipment and slightly less performance it's a great little starter mercedes-benz now this is the latest member of one of the most reliable models within the mercedes-benz lineup you can actually get a diesel engine as you well you can get a naturally aspirated v8 in the 2006 to 2010 versions of what we have here is the latest and greatest so remember the older generation they are bulletproof now they're a very stylish sedan and even that styling theme carries through with these newer versions like this and clearly it's it's a gorgeous unit. It's not full S-Class, but it has a lot of the same amenities with big, beautiful brakes. Of course, you have all the technology you would get in the S-Class. You have sunroofs and all of the other technology and performance you can get there. But as well, you do notice a more streamlined hood line here than you get typically with the S-Class, which sits a little higher. This is definitely more gangster style here. You do have more of a stylish back end, and they've always traditionally been a little more rounded off at the back and a little more sharp and stout here. You'll notice the windows are very low and tight, and the interior technology and style and quality is always top shelf. These generally are considered fairly reliable in the Mercedes-Benz lineup. Just have to make sure A, you don't buy yourself a car that's been smashed and bashed because body panels are pricey on it. We also want to make sure we're watching out for a couple of things. The Centrotronic system on these, the control unit can be a failure as well as timing chain issues. We know that timing chains, the tensioners, the ramps all have been a little bit of a Mercedes challenge from time to time. But if you get ahead of any of those failures or this rattling noise of the chains in the garbage can, then probably you're going to be just fine. There might be the odd leak. You can assume associate with that as well. Electric windows are one problem that you would anticipate from with some of these and the aromatic suspension system. So that's the suspension that keeps it leveled, keeps the air in the vehicle to keep it all on the straight and narrow. So if you put a lot more weight in there, it keeps the ride height just where you like it. Those aromatic systems aren't new failures and BMW also has a similar kind of setup in their vehicles where you could lose an airbag or high compressor or relays or you have a series of different issues and those can get pricey. But other than that, the rest of the vehicles stands a very stout very reliable great performer great style and a lot of bang for your buck 
One thing also to note that might be somewhat limiting if you want to drive around a lot of people in this vehicle, they're frameless windows, so that has its own challenges. Of course, there's only two seats in the back on that older variation, and you do have a fairly small trunk, so if you're hauling a lot of junk around, you're probably going to be somewhat limited. That's why you may have to step up to an S-Class if you're looking for that outright space. But if you want space, performance, you want a little bit of the style, and some reliability, the CLS might be your bet. Another little needle in the haystack is this little unit right here. Yeah, what is this? Well, clearly it is a Mercedes and clearly it's not a large car, but let's take a look around and understand why JD Powers Associates rates it at a four and a half out of five star. Sure, pre 2010 model years, you could actually get potentially some oil leaks, some power steering problems with these vehicles. We're a little bit of an issue with some of the earlier generation cars, but basically after 2010, they got most of that issue sorted out and the car just became a workhorse a bulletproof little machine that actually retains its value quite well because of its natural inherent reliability yes you do have this style of headlight to take note because no two c classes are alike this is this generation has a three-pointed star and of course this is the key to notice right here the headlight and if well here the older generation have the little light that's round there this is the one that you want not the other one with the round fog light this car is the one you want you do get great wheels with it and typical Mercedes-Benz mirrors. Yeah, of course you get a sunroof. An interior that isn't overly dressed up, but it works and it's better than the last outgoing models. Two-tone handles, of course circle around. You do get these beautiful taillights and this is the C300 by Mercedes and it's a 4MATIC. It is absolutely a very attractive car. Looks and feels very much like the E-Class. Other than you're doing away with a few cubic inches of space and capacity, from a distance most people can't even tell the difference between this C-Class and its same generation E-Class. And therefore it looks great, feels great, and it feels more refined than punching above its weight class. It's a great car and ultra reliable. Another great ultra reliable vehicle in a Mercedes lineup is this little unit here. 2013 to 2015 is absolutely almost bulletproof. Yes, the older generations had a few issues, they got sorted out, but this later generation of this SUV here is even more reliable than the Audis as well as the BMW X3s of the same generation. And they're quite interesting. They look very utilitarian. There's only a couple little nickel and dime issues you can expect from these, but what is this vehicle? Well, clearly you're dealing with a Mercedes. You don't have a lot of brake issues there, but you do have a power mirror, no problems there, and a one-touch access in there. Of course, you do have these roof racks that do a great job of hauling material, but you see it's that panoramic sunroof on some of these models that were known to have the occasional failure, and that would be one thing that you'd have to think about. Make sure it's operating if you're buying a used one, you're taking a look at that, that it functions properly. As well, under the hood, there's been the odd problem with rattles, and there's been the odd problem with a slight oil leak or coolant leak. Stay on top of basic maintenance and you will have no problem. That's a reliable workhorse engine that's well made. You don't have the peeling trim like on some of the other models. You don't have a lot of rust issue in this generation, and overall, this vehicle vehicle is built relatively sturdily. Of course, you do have LED taillights. It's a 4MATIC, so it's great all-wheel drive motoring, and you can tow a little bit of trailer action with that. Look, beautiful exhaust tips on there, but this is, in fact, a GLK 350 by Merck. And the only other real issue that seems to pop up consistently is this tailgate that lifts up from time to time. There seems to be some troubles with that here and there, but generally speaking, stick with your maintenance. These GLKs are literally bulletproof, and they will run for years. One of the best ones in the Benz brand. And another big winner in terms of reliability, and I don't think it's a big shocker, this is the latest version of that. First generation came out back in 2002, and and then back in 2007, it received a facelift. And then in 2009, it actually received JD Powers five out of five stars for overall reliability. Yeah, it's not perfect. In 2007, it had a pile of electrical gremlins and challenges with that. But later on, as they started to fix some of those problems in 08, and then by 09, most of those issues were gone. A few things to note though, on a lot of these E-Class cars, of course, they are slightly larger than the C, they're smaller than the S, so they win and they benefit from both levels. They get some of the base reliability that you get in simplicity from the C-Class, but they still gather a few of the key technologies that you're finding in the S-Class. For example, like the Airmatic system. A lot of these E-Class cars have the Airmatic, which you'll find it basically keeps the level right there on the front and the back. It keeps the vehicle nice and level, keeps everything on the straight and narrow. Of course, the Airmatic system 
system isn't new for failures with a lot of Mercedes Benz and the 2009 is one of those rare failure modes that you might expect. Now the airbags and the compressor and the relays and all the electrics associated with that can get a little bit costly. But it's not something you're doing every year. It might be something you do every three to five years where you're having to refurbish some parts within that system and then other than that you just do basic maintenance. You might also find some fiber optic related failures which is essentially a communication protocol across the car. There are sensors and there's sensor overload in a lot of these Mercedes. E-Class is no different. It definitely is a step up from the C-Class and as a result you might anticipate the odd sensor failure, O2 sensors, intake, all kinds of sensors for everything. For lighting, your lighting height you have sensors for the intake air, you have sensors for exhaust air, you have sensors for brake wear, you have sensors for how far these have to retract, you have sensors for this and how far this window actually has to open. You actually have sensors throughout this car even in the interior to tell you what goes wrong at any given time. And like any car the E-Class is no different. The simpler the car the simpler the drivetrain the least the amount of problems. Get into the AMG versions and you're probably going to see a little more failures. Diesels will last a long time but they will have their certain complexities. The E-Class is bulletproof. And with all of that said do you definitely want to check that out. That is some of the worst most unreliable Mercedes-Benz you can also buy. You definitely want to try to avoid those. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.